everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. This week we're painting another roaming monster from Massive Darkness by Simon Games. This time we're painting Chromatus, the big unicorn. So it's a bit of a trip down at memory lane this week. We're going to be doing some old school things, which uh, you can see the background there is how I used to have it. This model was requested by five-year-old Izzy about three plus months ago. So apologies for the delay getting it. I did start it, but... I'm sure you guys can all appreciate how much content I'm putting out at the moment and, and this model was just taking me so long I didn't manage to finish it. But luckily, Phil, Phil on Patreon, has used his Pick a Model a Month reward and he's picked Chromantis as well, so I get to finish it for both him and Izzy. So, we started with white primer just because I hadn't primed this in anything, so I thought, it was back when I thought Vallejo's white primer was just a primer before I knew the game colour colors could be used instead of a spray primer and then I covered it in cold gray now because any of the game colors could have been used I should have just covered it in cold gray anyway there's going to be a few mistakes on this unicorn or I, I think mistakes um, this is my first time painting a white model and I did not realize how difficult it was so after the cold gray I mixed in some ghost gray about 25% ghost gray 75% cold grey and then I just generously applied this over the top I'm just trying to catch all the raised parts I'm not, I'm not really dry brushing I've got plenty of paint on the brush and I'm just mixing that in I'm letting you see here me going down from cold grey I'm adding ghost grey each time getting lighter so that's the darkest to medium to this light one next I'm going to do the same a little bit gentler just catching more of the raised areas this time and slowly I'm going to start moving this this unicorn to be more of a white colour now, as, as I mentioned, you could have skipped the white primer and just used cold grey straight away. But I think just skip cold grey as well. Use a, a, a lighter grey to begin with. Something just off white, I think, and highlight this up to white. I don't take mine all the way back to white. and I think it makes him look a little bit scarier as a roaming monster anyway. Um, you can see me now taking ghost grey and mixing in a tiny bit of cold grey so now I'm going on to the lighter scale I'm going to same again sort of dry brushing but there's, there's quite a bit of paint on it each time getting less paint each time I iterate through one of these highlights I'm using less paint on the brush so it's catching more and more of the raised parts of the horse so I got towards this bit and I started thinking I've ruined my model one of the first models I've ever wanted to strip and start again uh, it was just way too dark for me and these colours are not blending at all all well. So next I decide just to take some ghost grey neat. So it's 100% ghost grey now and I'm just going to start painting them up much more like the white that I wanted. So I'm going to be applying this to all of the raised parts just leaving that, that well, it, does, it does blend down but leaving it down to the cold grey in the deepest parts. And I think I could probably have achieved this with just painting them just off white and then give them a very watered down coat of black shader. So after that, I've taken ghost gray and I'm gonna make a glaze. I'm gonna take about 10% ghost gray, 90% of that glaze medium, and paint all of his skin with that, really lightening him back up. Afraid I didn't record that, I thought I'd ruin this model. But, boom, and that's how he comes out after applying that wash. He looks fairly white, that's about the white that I wanted him, and he's got really, really nice shadows, nice muscle tone. Now I do think you might be able to achieve that faster with a shader. Let me know in the comments below if you think this was probably the better way of building up the white or if I should have cheated and just used used a shade. But they always look dirty to me. The, the lighter colours in a shade, I always think they just look like the little grubby, grubby creatures. So we're going to be moving on to bright gold. And this is to paint it on his hooves and his um, unicorn horn. Bloody red is going to be the first colours I'm going to be using. That's the red. I'm going to be painting this rainbow in the correct order. So we're starting with red. I'm just going to... I roughly guess how many strands we're going to try and make it even and we're going to paint his, his mohawk with a bit of red we're going to paint the middle of his tail with red I think you can paint the tails more difficult I was trying to trying to think where it should start should it start on the left should it start on the right should it start in the middle the tails are a little bit more awkward so you know I'd, I'd use the colors I'd make your own judgment where you want them to be I also painted the front of his little goatee there as well hot orange is next and that's to paint the orange so moving down his, his mane is, <laughs> I like that I called it a mohawk and not a mane the first time. You know, I'm good with words, I'm good with words. Also adding it to his tail there, just moving it on from the, from the red. I was also wondering if I should be painting both sides of the red, should it be orange on both sides? I said, yeah. Rainbow, keeping the rainbow colour scheme is difficult on the sort of 3D rainbow 
Yeah, yeah. Rainbow is a TD, right? And this is a 3D one. Moon Yellow by Vallejo. All these paints are by, by Vallejo, except Bright Gold, which was my army painters, but any gold would do. Um, it's just the one I had to hand, I think. Um, so, going to be moving the yellow just down his mane, down his goatee, and down his tail as well. Just catching. So, I, I am painting two strands here of, of the yellow because there was a tiny one and a big, well, two tiny ones actually. One's a little bit bigger. Sick Green by Vallejo is the green I'm going to use for the, for the unicorn. And again, moving down his mane. Next, three or four strands of hair. Um, next piece of tail hair that I decide and then I'll also paint in another one piece of his, his of his little beard so just a single line there using the detail brush get both sides and just a little bit of tidying up as well it's tricky getting in that tail just using the detail brush you're trying to use the, the regiment brush where I can but when it's getting delicate there just switching back down to the detail brush electric blue by Vallejo's the light blue that I'm going to be using. And we're just going to start whizzing through these videos a little bit faster. You get the general idea. Four strands, three or four strands of the hair or the mane of each colour. Pick and choose a strand on the tail and it's about one, maybe two on his beard. Dark blue by Vallejo is my indigo colour. I think that was a that was a strong choice for an indigo. Um, purple would do as well. Royal purple is pretty close, but I think if you've got dark blue by Vallejo, that's a, that's a nice colour to be using using the detail brush now just to get nice and uh, accurate where it meets his bottom. Don't, don't want to get any purple slash dark blue lines down that. Just painting the underside as well. So here you can see I'm painting two sides this purple. I am going for the red down the middle and then building out in both directions from that on the rainbow. Blue violet is going to be my choice for the, the purple. It's very, very light, uh, contrasting to that. Uh, indigo of dark blue there so because essentially those colors could be seen as the same those three last colors could be very similar so i've chosen three that are, are drastically different make him look a little bit more pretty a little bit of beautiful horse there so just running out of battery as i often did in the old in the old days and now we're on to highlighting and benson's here benson's helping me out he does <laughs> hopefully you've noticed he does love a good highlight so i saved this for him and resurrected it as Phil's request to see this video finished so he's round and helping me you can also see the backgrounds change and the lighting's upgraded as well hopefully let me know in the comments below if you suddenly prefer this background and if you think the lighting's better so he's going to be taking blue violet and he mixed in some white primer for the first level of highlight about 50 50 and applied a, 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 a slim line down all the edges of that as well as down his main as well and then for the second highlight he just added a little bit more white primer and just painted the tip of all of those he's going to be doing similar with all of these colors he's taking dark blue and he's mixed in a little bit of that blue violet so just making a lighter dark blue and he's painting all of the raised parts of his mane and his tail and then he's going to be doing again just mixing in another part of the the violet so just lightening up that dark blue again orange fire and moon yellow mixed together 50 50 and that's going to be to highlight up the orange, the hot orange in the first place. So this is the first highlight. He's going to do two highlights to both. Both times it's going to be about a 50-50 mix of lightening it up to about a two-thirds lightening it up the second time. So orange fire there is mixed with moon yellow two to one that time. So adding more yellow, getting it light. These, these measurements don't need to be 100% accurate. Just judge it by eye. Just make it gradually get lighter and paint towards the, the middle as you... Of each raised area. Benson also wanted me to make sure I mentioned th these colors are heavily watered down so that makes it very very easy to blend them together. You do want to be careful how much you get on the brush though because they're so watery it can easily run and over spill so just take a little bit of care there mixing in the water and making sure you've not got too much on the brush. So he's just highlighting up the yellow there with a bit of white primer and moon yellow and then mixing in a little bit more white primer so two to one here just getting it a lot lot brighter just painting the very tips the very raised parts of each each of his hairs hot orange is going to be used to highlight up that bloody red from the beginning and that's just going on neat and just painting a nice slim line down all the raised parts all the bits that would be catching the light and then he's going to use orange fire which is the brighter of the orange just to paint the very edges the very tops of all of his mane the tips of his tail similar similar process for all the colors 
and Sick Green is going to be mixed with Escorpino Green. I wonder why that's called that. Should it not just be Scorpion? It seems like it was not translated, but they're both by Vallejo. Every colour here is by Vallejo, with the exception of that gold, but any gold would do. And any Survivor shader I use later on, that was by the Army Painter. So Scorpino Green Neats now, just to put those final highlights on the green, catching the very edges and the tip of the tail and all the hairs and his mane and his beard. Next is Electric Brew, mixing in a little bit of white primer, just getting that nice and lightened up on the edges as well. And then we're going to be doing the same process once more, mixing a little bit more white primer, just lighting it up again for the second highlight. So probably about two thirds white and one third electric blue here. And you're just going to catch the, the edge. So all of this has been with a detail brush. You want to take a little bit of time, a little bit of care on this part of the model. And we're finished highlighting. There we go. So we're just doing a little bit of detail work now. So I'm going to use some Survivor shader. I'm going to flood the his eye with that. So I'm trying to get the line of his sort of, it looks like mascara I'm applying there. And just trying to build up the black line around. Benson's going to add some pale flesh to his nose. Just bring up that peachy look on his nose. And the inside of his ears on the artwork look like that too. So just getting that nice and light on both of those sections. Get his lips as well. And then he's going to use survivor shaped skin which is a sort of darker flesh tone and that's just paint in his lips there just bring them up a little bit darker and blend that upwards towards that pale flesh and that should give it a nice 3d look on here on his mouth really and just make him look a little bit more alive a little bit more horse like then we're going to be using white primer and that's to paint in two little eyeballs in all that black shader that i added previously so he's got a nice outline of his eye and then two eyeballs there and then after that's dried, we're going to use magic blue to paint it in two irises. And just notice that we're using a lot of different blues by Vallejo here. And they are lovely. I love the blues Vallejo provide. And there's a lot of really nice ones. I think electric's my favorite, but magic is another lovely color of blue. Speaking of electric, we're going to all out on these tiny, tiny eyeballs. And we're going to highlight them up with a tiny, tiny bit of electric blue in the top corner away from his nose there. Just to make them look a little bit more realistic. And then after that's dried, we're going to add in two tiny, tiny dots on that of white primer just to make it look like he's got some life in those eyes, a little bit shiny, a little bit lifelike as though he's alive, which is always nice when you're playing with tiny pretend plastic horses. Survivor shaders out, the only shader I've used. And this is just to, to sort of dull down those gold hooves and add some depth to his, to his horn on his head. So I'm just covering all of this in my black Survivor shader, but that's by the Army Painter. And then once that's dry, we're just going to highlight that up, just using the bright gold once more. And we're just going to paint in each sort of strand, each sort of ring of his horn there. Just make it look like it's catching the light and the, those, those recesses between each each little bit. Each of the bone uh, just got shadow in them, so making that look a lot more realistic. And then I'm going to go around all the hooves and just catch the very edge it just lets the lights hitting all around the outside and that'll tidy up the horse nicely just going to repaint it on the base dead black by the army painter as i've done with all my roaming models i'm just painting them straight black it's very easy to change you can do what you want at this point obviously we can do what you want all the way through the video but you might want to jazz up your base a little bit more and that's chromantis completely finished one hour 55 minutes took quite a long time but i hope izzy you've enjoyed that video and phil thank you very much for supporting on Patreon and picking that model. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you think to that Why I was quite happy with it by the end of by the end of this ordeal. Um, one thing to remember is we're painting so many models. I think there's no time to really worry if one's not perfect. You know, I've got another 200 to go on and paint afterwards. But even having said that, if you've got any tips for painting white models, let me know in the comments below. I'll take them on board. I've got a lot of white models to paint coming up. Thank you all very much for watching.